welcome back to the cfs channel today we will be discussing the question delete a note from bst now this seems like a fairly simple question right but in the last video i told you that we will be discussing the concept finding the pre predecessor and successor of a given key in a bst in this question was i lying to you why are we going to use that in such a simple question let's check it out so this is the question we are given a binary search tree and a node value x delete the node with the given value x from the bst now again if you are in an interview the obvious question should be that if no node with value x exists then do not make any change you should be asking should i return minus 1 should i return an error here the question tells us that just don't make any change just return from there okay you don't have to do anything so here you can see that the bst that was given to us was 1 2 3 and the node that we have to delete is 12 but there is no node so we just return the tree as it is which was 1 2 3 here this is such a big tree that is given to us the element that we have to delete the node that we have to get delete is x that which is equal to 9 so after deleting this this is how our tree looks we just deleted 9 from here it's very simple right we just have to remove one particular node so what is the complexity over here let's see from the diagram now to understand the complexity of deleting a node let's see the various cases where you know when we delete the node what is how is it impacting the tree now suppose we were deleting leaf nodes let's consider that as the first case that when we are deleting leaf nodes now this is very easy right because they don't have any children all we have to do is just delete them as it is we could be deleting this this there's no impact on the rest of the tree we just have to like Uh, detach it from the tree and just clear the value and we are done. Okay. Now second case is when there is one child of the node that we are deleting. Now let's take such example. Now suppose this is such a node. It has only one child. So what can we do? Whatever value was there. Suppose x was there. We just assign this and then we delete this particular node. So what am I essentially doing? Is I am deleting this particular node and I am assigning this x over here. So now this node actually becomes equal to whatever node was over here, and I have deleted whatever value was there, right? So I hope this is very clear. It is also fairly easy that you have only one child, so you just delete that one. Okay. Now the complexity actually comes when we are deleting a node with two children. So basically, they can be a child. So basically, there are children on both left and right side. So what are you going to do now? See, BST is again a binary tree. What are the number of children possible? Zero, one, or two. So we are talking about all the cases one by one. We have talked about when there are no children. We have talked about when there is one child. Now let's talk about when there are two children. And when there are two children, also it is not necessary that this is the only tree. Okay, now there can be like children below also. How do we do deal with such cases? Let's understand from the example. Suppose we have to delete this particular element. In this case, what we can do is. we can assign the value of this node to either this node or this node if we assign it suppose this value was x and this value was y so if we assign this x we just have to delete this if we assign it y we just have to delete this okay now you will say again this is very simple we are just taking one of the children and assigning it okay i am saying okay this is also simple let's take another case suppose i had to delete the root node itself this is very complicated there is an entire left tree there is an entire right sub tree suppose this value is x suppose this value is y i can't just go like okay assign this to x and delete x how do i delete x now or how do i delete y now okay now again this becomes very complicated so instead of that what do i do is either i find the in order predecessor or i find the in order successor one of the two cases let's take just one of the two to understand for now let's say i'm talking about in order successor see if i have to delete this what am i doing is that suppose this is x and this is y i am assigning this to y and then deleting this why am i saying i am deleting this see because it is easier to delete this and when i assign this to y it is not affecting the rest of the tree why is it not affecting the rest of the tree because all these values are still less than y and all these values are still greater than y right so i am not impacting the rest of the tree it is very easy to delete the leaf node so i am using that over here what am i doing i am finding the in order successor which was y i am assigning it over here and i am deleting this value so i am not impacting this or this similarly i could have found the predecessor also let's see how can we do that so what am i saying is that if i have to delete this i am going to assign x over here and i am going to delete this this is not going to impact the rest of the tree why is that 
because all these values are still less than x and all of these values are still greater than x. So the rest of the tree is not impacted only. I am just assigning this value and deleting it. Again, deleting this is very easy. Deleting this is very easy. Why? Because I just have to delete leaf now. Okay. So we have to see that how can I divide the problem into a smaller subproblem? How am I dividing into a smaller subproblem? I am actually deleting a leaf node from deleting a complex problem, which is deleting a node with two chat. So now let's just start writing the code. So this is the function that we have to write the code for. This is the root of the tree and this is the value that we have to delete. So this is the node ka value that we have to delete. Okay. Now again, whenever we start with the function, what do we have to do? We have to check that if there, if, if there is no root value, what do we do? We just return null from there. I don't think I have to say this anymore. You know this, right? Now, what are the three cases? The root ka value can be greater than or equal to or less than x, right? So let's write those cases. If root ka, now what is the value called? Let's see. It's called data. Okay. So if root ka data is greater than x, what does that mean? That our x actually is in the left subtree, right? So we can divide our bigger problem into a smaller subproblem by moving to the left subtree. So we are going to go to the left subtree and I am going to pass x. I don't need a helper function. I can reuse the same function. Why is that? Because I know that okay, it exists in the left side, so I can just pass it as it is. Okay. But again, here is a trick over here. See, here we are returning node. Here also we will be returning a node value. But the problem is, see, like while inserting, also we were attaching the node, right? Here we have to detach the node. So what do we have to do? We are, we are going to the left subtree. So we have to make sure that we assign the left side also to that. So what am I going to do? I am going to assign the root ka left to this. So whatever root it is going to assign, I am going to put it over here. Even if it is returning null, I have to assign this. So suppose there was just one value in root ka left and that is the value that I have to delete. So I have to put it to null, right? Otherwise, what will happen? I am deleting this and root ka left is actually pointed to that only. So I have to make sure that I point it to null also. There was a similar problem in insertion also. We had actually run and seen that, okay, that is not working. So similar cases in deletion also. So once you have actually dealt in insertion, you should be able to think about this yourself. If you were not able to think, just think of it in terms of if attaching was a problem, again, detaching will also be a problem, right? So we have to think of this. So this was when we were going to the left subtree. Now let's talk about the case that when we are going to the right subtree. So if x value is greater, then that means we are going to the right subtree. So again, if we return null or whatever root we return, we have to assign it to the right subtree. So I'm going to go like delete node. I'm going to go root ka right. I'm going to pass the x value. So I have divided my problem into smaller subproblems. I am adding an else if condition. And now there's only one case left that when root ka data is equal to x. Basically, we are at the element that we have to delete. Now, again, within this, there are three cases. The node that we have to delete can have no children, can have one children, can have two children. So let's start dealing with that. Okay, so let's deal with the first case when there are zero children. So basically, what is the case that if there is no root ka left, right? And there is no root ka right also. So that means there are zero children. So in that case, what do I have to do? I can just delete over here. I can delete the root and I can just return null from here itself. So now if I had to delete this particular, I've written null. So if suppose I had to assign that to the root ka left or root ka right, I have just returned null over here and that will be assigned. I hope you can understand how we are going back also in the recursion. So we'll return from here if there are zero children. Otherwise, what is the next case when there is one child? Now, when there is one child also, there can be two cases that when there is no root ka left, when there is no root ka right, okay? If there is no root ka left, that means that, okay, there is a right child. When there is one right child and we have to delete the root, what do we have to do? We have to assign the root ka value to the right ka value and we have to delete the right child, okay? So what am I going to do is I'm going to create another temp value and assign root in this because I'm going to assign root to root ka right. So since I've assigned this, I can just delete temp. So basically I've deleted whatever root was there and I've assigned the root to root ka right. And now I will just return root from here. So this was the case when there is one child and there is only right child. Now let's get to the case that 
if there is no root ka right side that means that there is only left side so that is very similar to the last case that we had right so now our temp value will again be root only our root value will become what it will become root ka left right and we are going to delete the temp value and what am i going to do i am going to return root okay now else so we have dealt with the conditions when there is one child so this actually means that okay there are two children okay so now what do i have to do i have to either find predecessor or successor and then assign that okay so now i am going to assign a new node i am going to write another function over here which i am saying going to say in order successor of the root okay once i have assigned when i have gotten this what am i going to do is i will now assign the value of root ka data to whatever value i got so i am assigning the data to the in order successor ka data and now what am i going to do i have to delete the successor because i have assigned this value now i have to delete that successor also and now because i am finding the successor it is going to be on the right side so i also have to reassign the right part okay because i have to return that also right so in the root ka right what am i doing now i am calling the same function i am going to go like delete node and i am going to pass root ka right and i am going to pass what value i am going to pass temp ka data why am i passing temp ka data because this is the node that i actually have to delete from the right subtree if it is not clear just try dry running it we will see for pre order successor also we will see for predecessor also here basically what am i doing is i have found the in order successor and what did i do i assigned the value to the root node and now since i have assigned that i have to delete that particular node and for that what have i done i have divided my problem to a smaller problem i am going like delete node it is going to be in the right subtree because i am dealing with successor and i am passing the value because now i know what value i have to delete and i am just doing that let's finish writing this function we had already written it in the last video so i am quickly going to write it and not discuss it in detail so in the function i have to return the node right so that is the return value that i am going to add i am going to add node and i am going to call the function in order successor as i had called it and i am passing the root over here right now what do i do i go to the right side so i go to root ka right and i have to find the leftmost child of the right subtree so while there there is a left child i am going to go to root equal to root ka left and i am going to return root we had already discussed this in the last video so i am not going to discuss it in detail let's compile and see whether this works or not okay i have misspelled this it should be delete node and also i forgot that we should be returning root from here and now notice that we are actually returning root in all the three cases so instead of that what am i going to do is i'm going to write it in comma so these are the small things that you should think of that okay i'm always returning root so how can i make my code look smaller i can just return root from here okay let's compile and see now okay me being the smarty pants just the case that we had discussed that okay i have to return root always and here we have assigned but we have not returned any root so that is why there is no output so instead of returning root over here i have to return it outside basically in all of these cases we have to return root okay so it is not just for any one particular case we always have to return root even when i have detached it like root ka left root ka right i again have to return the root over here otherwise it not i am not returning anything there will be blank output so yeah small things like this plus i'm recording video at 4 am so yep now let's submit and see worked i hope the code was clear to you let's quickly write the code for in order predecessor also to be sure that you have understood it properly because not many people discuss both the approaches and i am sure you must uh, be thinking that okay why only successor and why not predecessor so we should be writing the code for both and making sure that okay it works so i'm going to call the function as in order predecessor and i'm going to pass the root so how do we find the predecessor it has to be in the left subtree right so we are going to assign root equal to root ka left another thing i have not checked over here if the, if there is root ka right if there is root ka left i don't need to check over here because when i am calling i am sure that there are two children i am sure that there are uh, there is a child in the right and the left 
otherwise you should be putting a check over here so that you don't need to cash okay so now what you have to do i have to find the rightmost child of the in the left subtree so what i'm going to do i'm going to go like while there is root ka right keep going towards right side so i'm going to go like root equal to root ka right and i am going to just return in the end okay and over here instead of in order successor i am going to now use in order predecessor and i am going to assign it like that only to call it in order predecessor and now instead of going to root ka right we will be going to root ka left why because our node our predecessor is going to be in the left subtree so instead of assigning the right value we will be assigning the root ka left value instead of the right value let's combine and see whether this works or not this works let's submit and see whether this works or not worked so the submission was successful i hope you have understood the question properly and like the previous videos that we had discussed here also we are branching out to just one of the branches so again the time and the space complexity is going to be remaining same so time complexity is order of the height of the tree and space complexity we are not using any extra space so order of one but we are using recursive space so order of height of the tree i hope you have understood and i really hope you are going to show up tomorrow i hope you are liking the series i am being consistent i hope you can be consistent with me it will mean a lot to me see you tomorrow